Hey everybody, it's Andy. Welcome to my weekly show where I help you build a career you love. Great to have everybody. I've got a great session for you today. I am very, very pumped about this one. We're gonna talk about how do you stay positive in your job search and how do you work on the right activities so that you do get hired. So we got a lot to cover and for a long time I've been wanting to do this one uh, this way, you know, it, because job searching is super, super tough. And I want to talk today about why it is that people get frustrated, how you can almost immediately change your perspective by simultaneously either altering the activities that you're doing or at least the way that you look at those activities. And, and I can't wait to share Stephanie's story. Stephanie was struggling for months. She was somebody who joined, then joined my job search boot camp. We had a coaching session, and the formula I gave her, she used this same formula to surface her job within two days. Two days. She altered her approach, and within two days, surfaced the job that she ultimately took. So I can't wait to share that story with you. And speaking of two, there are two things I want to get out of the way right away and two things that I want to talk about that I want to keep in the way for the rest of this discussion. The two things that I want to, I want to get out quickly is, you know, because we're talking about positivity and happiness and th things related to your outlook and your attitude, the first thing that I want to say, and I think a lot of you would, would probably agree with me on this, and some of you might not, but in my opinion, happiness is a choice. Positivity and a positive attitude is a, is a choice. It's not something external. It's not something that happens to you. It's, it's not something conditional. It's something that you, you choose to be. But, 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 I am hugely empathetic because I know how difficult job searching is. I mean, job searching is ridiculously difficult to do it, to do it well and to do it the right way. And I want you to think about this, not to make you feel worse before we make you feel better, but think about this. You don't, you don't job search very often. You're not sure what the best practices are. You've been given megatons of bad advice from well-intentioned and well-meaning friends and family members and others. And, and the fact that you are like well-adjusted normal humans make you make assumptions about what's etiquette or appropriate or not appropriate to do behavior you should have in the job searching process which which many times is incorrect is incorrect so you have got a highly stacked deck against you okay those are those are the two things i want to get out of the way but the two things that i want to keep in the way that i want to make a central theme for today's discussion is and regardless of whether it's job searching or anything in your life, there's there's two things that generally get people unhappy. I mean, there's a lot of things that can get you unhappy, but there's there's generally two. And 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 I, I wanna I want I want you to keep these in the forefront of your mind as we go through this discussion today, because you, you need to be aware of it so that you know it's happening to you and you know it's doing it and you know you're doing it. The first thing, the first thing is whenever somebody has lack of control or lack of choice or they feel like their options are limited they feel like their options are limited they tend to get frustrated they tend to get frustrated so whenever you feel like you're backed into a corner or there aren't really any opportunities or there aren't really any choices or you're not in control of the situation people get nervous people get upset the other thing is oftentimes how you look at your situation and what you use to measure your progress and your success could be faulty. So the other thing that tends to get people unhappy is they're using the wrong metrics. They're using the wrong metrics to know whether they're making progress or how close they are, how successful they are. So we're going to talk about these things because and I want to talk about I want to talk about the control issue first. Um, and think about this. Just, just think about yourself for a second. And think about as you've gone through your job search, whether you've ever said this to yourself. And I'm going to give you maybe, there's a lot of these, but I'm, I'm going to give you my, my, top, my top five or so. Here's what I get a lot from people, and I'm guessing you're going through this too. Online, this is a limitation. So what's out there and available to me is what I can find online. The opportunities that organizations publish, 
what's available that I can see, I'm limited based on that. Or how about this one? Get this one a ton. My location. Andy, I live in a city where there's only government jobs. There's only oil and gas jobs. There's only insurance jobs, automotive jobs, you name it. And, or it, I live in a rural area. There's just not a lot of jobs. Okay, so we get this, we get this one a lot. It makes you feel limited. How about this one? You ever think about this? Well, my degree is in this, so I need to stay in this. Or I've been in this career for a few years or 10 or 30 or whatever, so I really need to stay in it even though I don't want to because I need to be able to get a job. You start thinking in those limits. How about this one? My network is limited. I don't know a lot of people. I haven't really kept it up. Or the network that I do have, they're not getting back to me. Or when they get back to me, they don't really know of any opportunities. Limits, limits, limits. Here's another one. The ATS hates me. I can't get past it. I can't get to the recruiters or I can't get past the recruiters or recruiters don't like my resume or whatever it might be or whatever it might be. These kinds of things generally, generally create this lack of control, these limits that we place on ourselves. We don't give ourselves as many choices that are truly out there, that are truly out there. So here comes Stephanie. I wanna, I wanna bring Stephanie in, in and we're gonna kind of weave her little case study throughout the rest of this lesson. She was somebody who was struggling for months she thought a lot of these things, okay? She was putting her resume in the applicant tracking system. She's a sales executive, lives in the mountain area of, of, uh, of the United States, so kind of, the west, kind of the west coast. And where she was, there wasn't a ton of opportunities and she'd been struggling. She joined my job search bootcamp, started going through some of the lessons and reached out to me and she says, you know, these are great. I, I, I think I want a coaching call. I think that would really help push me over the top. So no problem. We got together. First thing I asked her was, okay, I'd like to understand the history. Where you been? What have you been doing? Just kind of walk me through it and then let me know what adjustments you've started to make as a result of some of the, the videos you've been watching in the Job Search Bootcamp or some of the, the lessons that you attended. So she told me that. A lot of ATS submissions and those kind of things. Okay, so okay, let's, all right, that's done. Let's just put that on pause. Here's, here's exactly what I want you to do. And obviously, she was very frustrated. She'd been doing this for a number of, of several weeks, months, in fact. And so I said, all right, here, let's just break it down so it's very easy for you to manage. Let's make the activities very bite-sized but very powerful. So first thing that I want you to do is I want you to take a look at your target company list. She'd already started building one of these. If you're not sure what that is, I'm going to share more about how to do that a little later. But she had a list of companies that she was researching that she wanted to potentially join. So she had some of those. I said, take the top 10. Just take 10. Just take 10. This is Monday. Monday, she and I are speaking. Monday, midday. Just take 10 of them. Then what I want, and I want to use whatever criteria you want. The type of company, where they're located, if they have an opportunity or not. Doesn't make any difference. Whatever your criteria is, use that. Pick your 10. Then what I want you to do, do a little research. See if you can locate one of three types of people. Either, and these are mostly mid-sized companies. You know, I don't care if it's the C-levels or the vice president of sales, somebody who he or she could potentially be your boss, or the HR person or recruiter, somebody that we can put a face on and a name with that you can send a direct email to. So that's the second thing. So find the companies, find the people. Third thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna tailor a message to based on who it is. If it's a C-level, we're gonna do this. If it's, a v, if it's a potential boss, we're gonna do that. If it's the HR person, we're gonna, we're gonna do that scripted up her, her cover messages slash emails or whatever we were gonna send and I want you to send those 10 out. And then let's check back at the end of the week and let's see what happens. So she, she sent those out. Here's what happened. She calls me on Friday. She said, okay, I said, first thing I said out of my mouth, give me the stats, what happened? She said, well, two of them never got back to me. That's fine. Five of them said thanks but no thanks. So far, so good, right? I, we're batting about the percentages that I thought. She says, three of them got back to me. I have three interviews, and one of those resulted in a job. One of those resulted in a job. So within less than two days, she was able to surface that. And that sounds like a great story, except I think there's more to it from a lesson standpoint. When you think about the interactions that occurred, two, no responses. She can't do anything about that but five bongs came back. That's 
50% of her outreach came back and said no. Now, what most people would do is leave it at that and say thank you or not reply. But, but what did she do? She can control her response and her outreach, slings back to them and says, thank you for considering me. If anything changes, please let me know because I'd be happy to come visit for a discussion because I, I'm really interested in your organization. And as, and as you can see, I'm in the middle of my job search. Is there anybody that you know that you think could use my services, whether that's an individual or a company, somebody that I might be able to reach out to? Of the five, two got back to her and said, you should talk to this person. I know the vice president of sales over at that company, sort of in your area. You should reach out to him. I think he's looking for people. So think about it. She sends 10 messages. 50% responses were no, but of the 50%, she was able to get two responses to continue the dialogue because she reached out with some tactics. And would that take her four minutes? No, it took her 30 seconds because we'd already written the script because we knew people were going to get back to her and say thanks, but no thanks. So she literally copied boilerplate, didn't even have to change a word, and could send it to both of those people that reached back to her. So the point is, what you need to focus on, what can you control? You can control these three things, your content, so your resume, your cover letters, all those good things. You can control the output or the outflow of them or the continuations, the follow-ups or whatever you send your stuff anywhere you want. Nobody is stopping you. And the third thing that you can control is your response to it, how you react to it, but also what you do in reaction to it to it because you don't know what's going to come back but we knew that people weren't going to respond and we knew that people were going to email her back and say thanks but no thanks so that's networking just because she did i mean it's not like they were people that she had in her network previously but that's networking networking is not limited to people you already know or people they know you start developing relationships the minute somebody responds to you so i want you to keep that in mind so from a control standpoint we focused on what she can control focused on her outflow, and then rang everything we could out of that. Okay, so that, that's, that's a key point that I want you to take away. But now let's talk a little bit about the metrics. Because, you know, she was feeling miserable. And I know a lot of you are because I get a lot of emails. And actually somebody, uh, Stu, just on the, um, you know, on the, uh, <laughs> the chat said he applied to 400 places. What a lot of you are doing is you are considering your value, your worth, and, and your emotions are sinking because what? Applicant tracking systems are not letting you through. What the dumbest systems on earth, even when they're set up properly, that filter in maybe two to 3% of the applicants, you shouldn't be measuring yourself against that. You shouldn't be uh, measuring yourself against how many recruiters are responding back to you. That has nothing to do with the value that you can contribute to this world. But I see how in a job search, a lot of us get lost in those numbers and we start to feel pretty badly. But here's what I'd rather you do, and here's what I'd ra how I'd rather you look at it, because if you could do these five things or, or, or measure these five acts, you'll have a much better indication of the health of your job search and whether you're on the right track or not. Not to mention, you're going to get real live data just like Stephanie did. She got reactions that she could work with. That's helpful. Accidents serendipitous stuff happens when you are engaged when you are shoving your resume into an applicant tracking system there's not a lot that can happen other than yes we'll 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 be happy to talk to you so here's the five things that i want to make sure that you do slash look at the number of companies okay so i don't care if you measure yourself by the hour the day or the week but one metric that i would look at or that i ask my one-on-one -on -one coaching clients is how many companies did you identify to target? Here again, if you do not know how to build a target company list, I already created the video for you. I think we did it in a live office hour session. It's called How to Build a Target Company List for Your Job Search. It's in the description. I'll also, for the recording, I'll, I'll put it up in, in the card when, when this recording is all done. But that's, that's the first metric that I would look at. How many companies are you, are you surfacing? Because those are the number of at-bats you have. Second thing is, how many people within those organizations can you identify that you can send your message to? 
This is people that you are targeting that are within organizations of that you would like to work for. So in Stephanie's case, we talked about can you find the C levels? Can you find uh, the HR folks? Can you find the VP of sales? That would have been her hiring official. I don't care what you need to use. Use LinkedIn, use press releases. If it's a publicly traded company and you're senior enough, you look at the 10Ks and the 10Qs, they have people in them. You can figure out who to target. That's another great metric. The third thing is, but then we have to know what to do with those people. Are you building relationships? So I'm not talking about how many LinkedIn connections do you have. I'm talking about have you done something to open up a relationship, whether that's you sent them an email that says, I'd love to connect with you. I don't care if you want to have coffee with them, if you want to send them your resume, if you're opening up some dialogue and you're trying to network, whatever it is, people that you would consider could ultimately lead you to your next job or lead you to somebody that can lead you to your next job and so forth. But keep track, are you building relationships? If you don't know how to do this, I've got a video for that too. It's called Business Networking, How to Build Professional Relationships. I'll put It's in the description, I'll put it in, in a card as well. That's the third thing that I would look at. And the fourth thing, now the rubber's really starting to meet the road. How many thoughtful emails and calls are you sending out each day, each week. Thoughtful. I had to ride to squeeze that up in the note card because I'm not talking about blindly sending your resume or your email to a whole bunch of people that says undisclosed recipients or, or whatever. I'm talking about I found a company, I found a person, or I'm truly trying to get to the person. A thoughtful email could be to an email to somebody to ask you to introduce yourself to somebody. That's thoughtful. But are you sending the right emails and you've got all the ammunition you need for that? If you're not sure, if you're not sure how to do this, to reach into people that you don't know. I mean, I know a lot of you like my four sentence cover letter, but when you are navigating through your job search at this level, I am a, I, I favor uh, the video I created about how to apply when there's no job opening and I created the no job opening cover letter for you. It is seven sentences. It is my favorite piece of collateral related to cover letters out there. You can tailor it, uh, but it is really sweet and you can send that anywhere. Nobody is preventing you. You are in 100% control of sending that thing wherever you want to any company that you want, wherever they are, whether they have an opening or not. So I've given you I've given you the the script there as well, and then all, all ultimately we need to get you some interviews. So you're sending out thoughtful emails. Are you getting interviews in relation to the thoughtful emails you're sending out? I would rather you be tracking the percentage of interviews against the number of people that you are actually targeting. I'm not talking about submitting your resume to an applicant tracking system. You're gonna bat 3% at best. So if you stick your resume into 100 different companies and, and you were actually qualified for the job, three of them might call you back. That's not a good ratio. That's not a good ratio. So, so I, I, would, I would rather you look at the number of interviews that you are getting in relation to your thoughtful outreach. Those five metrics, the number of companies, the number of people, the number of relationships, the number of thoughtful emails, and the number of interviews are gonna give you a much better indication of how you're doing in your search. Now, one other thing that I have for you that I'm glad and hugely smiling to bring back, if you want more of this, if you want more of this, some of you might be familiar with my job search masterclass, I have brought back this little beauty too. So if, you don't, if you've not seen the job search masterclass, as of a few hours ago, I re-released it out of the Mile Walk Academy. It is a three-part video series that takes you down on the three most important things you need to know about your job search. And inside that workbook are different uh, job search work plans, how to allocate your time, things you should be focusing on. They're kind of an extension of what we talked about here. So, and the other thing is, before we, before we sign off, is if you've not grabbed interview intervention, when you get those interviews on the line, 
I'm, I'm still, at the time we're recording this or shooting this, I'm giving away Interview Intervention, the entire collection, free. It's the $29 book. It's the ebook and audio book, which are 27 bucks. And I'm also throwing in a bonus ebook, How to Interview the Employer, 75 Great Questions to Ask Before You Take Any Job. That's another $27. And all I ask is you pay $7 shipping and handling. Anywhere in the world, I'll ship you that hardcover book. So that's it for the lesson. If you are loving this, click the thumbs up button. Click the thumbs up button. If you're watching this anywhere uh, other than the Tips for Working Life blog or my YouTube channel, hop over to those sites. And if you're watching this on the recording, I'll see you next week. For everybody else who's with me, let's go to the chat. I'm solo today, so I need to look through the chat. My trusty partner, Kara, is not here with me. Um, so hopefully everything worked. Uh, I had green lights the whole way through, which is always really nice. But uh, let me let me say hi to the, the folks who are here. Daniel, boot camper, Stu, congratulations on getting your job offer. I was absolutely over the moon thrilled with your email. I, I actually printed it out and uh, it's, it's, it's sitting on my desk. I loved it. Stu, for those of you who don't know Stu, is in the Mile Walk community and he'd been looking for a while and he is 69 years old and I can say that because he typed that in the, in the chat before we, we started and I love it and I love it. And sunny day, good luck on your interview. Mm. This episode is brought to you by the Leadership Podcast. And hey, Jim Vasilopoulos, hope you're out there. All right. All right, Stu, wait, so we got a question. Let's, get, let's start getting into the questions. That's pretty good. We got about 40, 39 minutes. We got 39 minutes for questions. Folks, if you're loving this, share this out because we're going to be on till noon. And I got 40 minutes and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk really fast and I'm going to get a lot of these questions in. Um. Stu is 69. He's been offered a job at the lower end of his requested range. Only offer after 400 applications. So he submitted his resume into 400 applicant tracking systems or submittals of some way. Should I even bother trying to negotiate if I kill the silver, not golden goose? So Stu and everybody else. Stu and everybody else. I don't care if you're 69, 109, 29, makes no difference. Anytime you get a job offer that does not absolutely blow you away, which in this case you're, it did not, it was at the lower end, I would negotiate. And if you want to know some of the best tactics to negotiate, I have two videos that I would send you to. One is how to negotiate um, your, your job offer after, or after you receive your job offer. The other one is why you don't get paid what you deserve. That's a live office hour session that I did. So the first 20, 30 minutes of that program are the tactics that I, I would employ. So I would check that out and it is historically proven, uh, not just in my opinion, but st our, my, Mile Walk, my executive search firm that I've been operating for 15 years and all the stats that we collect on everybody who's made a counter offer, it works and you do have a shot of getting some because employers typically do not come to the table with their final offer. Why? Because isn't it better for them to give you a slightly lower offer for you to then ask them for more, them to actually give it to you, and you feel great that you got a little something. They wanna, they wanna make sure that they have that uh, I would I would immediately, whenever any of you get an offer, I would immediately ask if there is any wiggle room. It's the expression that I like. It sounds better than can I have more or is there more? But is there wiggle room? Could, you know, is there any, you know, is this malleable? And, uh, and I would go from there. But Stu and everybody else, I would check out, I would check out those, uh, those videos. Cool, hope that helps. All right, Tammy Ann, great to see you. Racer X Rex. Hey, man, I'm going to be emailing you with some options to talk next week. Charles, good to see you. I, Charles, thank you for the emails. I have those in my inbox, and I need to go through them in more detail. But I love how detailed you are. <laughs> Pat, good to see you. I-team support is right. Thanks, buddy. Ooh. Hang on, guys. Ooh, sorry, I think I lost my toggle stamps. Hang on. All right. Hey, Mom. How are you? Love you. Can't wait to see you Saturday. Gabby. Oh, no. Thank you. You are, Gabby, you're welcome. You are so welcome. 
Hey, we have somebody from Norway. Giasi? I'm not sure if that is how you pronounce your name. It, can you actually put your pronunciation in the chat so I can see it? By the way, just so you guys know, j j j actually, um, when when we get when we get done with these, um, what I what I like to do is I like to leave uh, YouTube records it, and the live chat will stay with uh, with with the video. And if I don't get to your question. What I always ask is, can you put it in the comments of this video? Because over the weekend, I always go through, you know, I try to do a little throughout the week, uh, but over the weekend, I answer a lot of my YouTube comments and my blog comments, and we always look to see what's on people's minds, and if it, whether I answered your question or not, we always try to use that to, for future lessons. So I always love, we, we do look at the whole chat. Um, and we might I might not get to it before, before 12 today, but we look at everything. And I would love to know how to pronounce your name as part of that, <laughs> so please let me know. Ron, I know how to pronounce your name. Good to see you from Kansas City, great barbecue. Alex, oh man, we have a first timer. I entered the job market last week and looking forward to your tips. Alex, welcome. Can everybody give Alex a big live office hours hug? Did it start yet? Oh, Racer X, I'm assuming you were doing that at 11. The zombie review is better known as Rory. Didn't hear back. Reference checked and glowing. And so far, nothing. Back to the job grind. Uh, hey, Rory, can you do me a favor and just email me and let me know how long that gap is. Or go in the Malawak Academy and, and in the boot camp and, and put the comment in about how long that's been. And I'll, I'll give you some more uh, suggestions. There we go. Stu, thank you. Cecilia, how are you? Dinner time by you. Tristan, dinner time. Oh, my God. Malaysia. Oh, wait. That's Jasmine. How you doing, Jasmine? Good to see you. Connie Cotter from the Cheese State. And I will email you later today because we're going to get together. I'm excited to get together with you. Pat, great to see you. Tracy R. has a question. Hi, Andy. Thanks for what you do. Do you have any tips on closing the deal in the in the face-to-face? -face? I like... I make it to the final round, but don't ultimately get the offer. Okay, wow, that's you know what? That's a great question. I want to reread that one, and then and then and then we'll we'll roll. Mm. So Tracy R asks, "Hi Andy, thanks for what you do. Do you have any tips on closing the deal in the face to face? I make it to the final round, but don't ultimately get the offer." Tracy and everybody else, there's there's two or three tactics that I absolutely love. To, to use in almost every interview. And I say almost because some of these questions are a little bit rough for the early stage interviews. So here's what happens. You, you, know, you fill out your application or you send your email or you do whatever you do. You get the screen, let's say, for most of you. You're, you're interviewing with an HR person, a recruiter or whoever. Somebody's trying to gather some information from you. I want you to have a good discussion. It, Tracy, it doesn't seem like you're having any problems there. You get into the discussions and you start meeting people who are more in a hiring capacity or maybe on your team or have much more or senior management who has much more influence over whether you get the job. In those interviews, the first suggestion that I have for you is if you have not seen it yet, watch my free webinar. It's about an hour. It's called Three Keys to Ace Any Job Interview. That, what that will do is that will help you understand how what the communication issues that are going on in the interview, how to overcome them, because a lot of times you might think that the communication is going effectively, but the interviewer is making some inaccurate assumptions about your ability to do, job, do the job or how you might fit in. Okay, so that will help with your responses, your storytelling, and your and your asking of questions. Okay, so that's that's that portion. Then, as you get toward the end of the job interview, so not the end of the process, but the end of each interview, where you are meeting with somebody of substance, meaning uh, somebody who's really going to have great influence over whether you get the job. If you're past the screens, you're already onto those people. You want to make sure that. It, it, and if you watch the three keys to ace any job interview webinar, I talk about the way that there are misunderstandings, miscommunications, and so forth. And a lot of times that leads to reservations that the interviewer has about hiring you. So I actually want you to ask them in the interview. You can say, hey, I know we've only been talking for an hour, but based on everything we discussed, do you have any reservations about hiring me? 
Uh, a lot of people say, well, geez, that would make me so uncomfortable. It's really not. You're just asking whether there's anything that they're concerned about, but you need to be very clear that you ask them specifically about reservations because the reservation is going to come in one of three forms. The reservation is either going to be something that, that they misunderstood that you said, in, this, in which case you can now knock that down and clarify it. They might have made a faulty assumption about something you could not do, or they, they said, well, geez, you didn't have the experience or whatever because you didn't investigate or they didn't ask you and you didn't know to tell them. If that's the case and there's a gap, you can fill it in, okay? So you've handled those two. Or it's a reservation and it is an actual reservation. It's a reality, but at least now you know you have to overcome that and here's where you can kind of dampen that. So that's the first thing. If you, the mistakes people make is at the end when they say, is there any additional information I could provide you? Is there any additional information I can give you to determine if I'm a good candidate? Well, at that point, I've already, I've already made these conclusions. I've, I have these reservations or whatever. I'm not necessarily thinking. I've already made a decision. So off I let you go because I want to be polite. That's what a lot of interviewers do. And you didn't do yourself any favors by being vague. You need to ask them for the negative and then overcome that objection. When I ask you, do you want to buy something? You say to me, I don't have the time. I don't have the money. I don't have the whatever. I have to know how to handle those in advance. I know what those are going to be. You could anticipate what those reservations are going to be before you even get into the interview. Then try to diffuse them. And then ask at the end explicitly to make sure that you can't, that you do diffuse them. Then what I would do is I have a little technique that I like to call, you know, kind of confirm, assure, and close it up because interviewers need repetition about the, the glorious stuff that you've done and they need to be reminded that it's okay to hire you. I know this sounds ridiculous, but this is true. So what I always coach the candidates to do is when you go and when you get down to the end after you ask the reservation question you say okay I want to confirm my understanding of the position and that this is what you need okay boom 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 we're now on the same page so you've just reiterated what it is they want you to do I want to assure you that I'm the right candidate because boom 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 this is like putting a little summary together right at the end to close it up and if you are in the portion of the interview where you're asking your questions, normally at the end you get to ask the questions, you can use this as one of your questions at the very, very end. And if you have more questions and you're running out of time and you can see it's top of the hour, they're going to close you up. What you do is you erase all the other questions, you go right to this one. You say, I just, I have a question I would like to confirm that this is true. Yes, it's true. Okay, then I want to assure you that I'm the right person because... And I want to reiterate my interest in this and I want to know what's next. I want to know what's next. If they're not a person who can ultimately tell you what's next, then you say, I would, well, what would be next if I was to proceed or if I was, and, and you want to keep moving it. If you do that along the way, when you get down to the end, meaning the end of the interview process, so you've been doing this in all the interviews, you get down to the end, trust me when I tell you, you will get that job offer. You will get the job offer. So watch three keys, ask the reservations question, use the confirm, assure, and close technique, and if you or, or Tracy just go get this and read this, and what I just told you is all in there. Okay, so it's, it's all in there. It's all in the interview book. Folks, if you don't have it, grab it. it the, the, it's the link's in the description, but what I just said Go read the book. It's 111 you know, pages or something. You can get through it in an afternoon, but it'll really help you. So I hope that helps. All right. Keith, how are you? John, how are you? All right. I'm assuming everything is fine. Um, I'm looking at, let me see here. I'm looking at, I got a lot of people here and I, they're still here and everything's green. So I'm, I'm assuming, hey Jan, how are you? Rosemary, boot camper. How's, Rosemary, are you, can you tell me, are you safe with the, with all these fires? Jeez, I worry about you guys. Max Traveler, how are you? Thomas, any tips on IT networking event? On an IT networking event. I love this. 
Okay, Thomas, this is great. You know what's so great about it? I love when people ask me questions when I just shot a video on it. So I literally, uh, and you know what, forgive me because I shoot these a lot in advance uh, and, and I don't know always what comes out when, but I know I just released one uh, about the best use of networking groups. Literally, I, it has to be within the last two, three videos that I released, and we, I release them every Tuesday and Thursday, and sometimes on Sundays. So it's in, it's in there somewhere, and it, regardless of IT, regardless of IT, I would just make sure all of you that want to leverage networking groups or associations, that you are going to networking groups that are offering educational services. It's a huge distinction. So some of the networking groups are for job seekers and 98% of the people in the room are looking for jobs. If all of those people are looking for jobs, it's going, while not totally worthless, it's going to be a less effective use of your time to go to those types of network, networking group meetings. I would rather you go to a meeting where 98% of the people are employed, they are in the IT industry or wherever you're, you know, finance industry, HR function, whatever it might be, and they, they have a guest speaker. I'm going to speak, uh, as an example, in February. Uh, uh, to a group of HR folks and finance folks. It is a, it is a tailored uh, networking event that they do at the second Friday of every month in the morning. They have a guest speaker. I'll speak for an hour. Then they'll have uh, something else, a little show and tell. And then you know, they'll have a little breakfast. And then they'll spend time walking around the room, shaking hands and passing out cards. Go to those because that's educational. So I'm going to teach them a bunch of stuff about hiring. And I'm going to teach the finance guys about some other stuff that's pretty cool. And then, you know, then they're going to interact with each other. And if you can get into those kind of events, those would be valuable because those people are working and you can, you can talk to them about potential opportunities within their, within their companies. So I'm about, edu it needs to be educational. And most of the educational groups want you to have some experience in that industry. So for most of you, if you're an IT person, you're a finance person, you're an HR person, you're an accountant or whatever, marketing, you can get in pretty easily. And you don't need to have loads of experience. They just like that the fact that you're in there because then you can offer something to the group. But that would be my guess. And that would be my suggestion and my tips. And then I would work the room like crazy, like crazy. And I would try to, I would try to, understand you know who's working where and what they do and all that good stuff all right d good to see you Kristen. nice to see you it's happy friday oh happy friday eve okay <laughs> it's, it's like, you know my wife and i had a conversation in the bathroom the other day and i told her i don't ever know what day of the week it is and i just rely on kara to tell me when i had to show up in front of a camera all right hey bev how are you Kristen, congratulations. I'm glad I'm glad you're getting some traction there. That's awesome. <laughs> hey, by the way, so okay, so I don't know if you guys caught this, and I don't mind telling you this. I, I shoot so many videos. I mean, I'm shooting recorded videos. We do these live shows, we cut out QA's. Uh, you know, I don't know, five days a week I'm in front of a camera talking to somebody live. So what I'm what I'm trying to do is because these live office hour sessions are are so lengthy, a lot of people they don't always they don't always watch the session when it's recorded. So there's 112 of you whatever Ron right now. But when this gets recorded and they see it's an hour long, they don't always want to watch it. So what I'm what I'm trying to do now is cut out just the teaching portions. So you might see some of these like I don't know six months from now, and uh, and and just a more bite sized video. Uh, but I think they're hugely valuable and not everybody gets to catch them and not everybody wants to spend that kind of time when, it, when the reality is that, you know, a good portion of it is Q&A and only so much of it is the lesson. So, Pat, what you saw the other day, I think, was a cut up from a, a live office hours I did on uh, executive level job interviewing. And that might be my uh, that might have been my finest live show ever. Ever, I dare I say, and so I'm glad you like that. And everybody, I, everybody loves the note cards. I don't I just. Don't, this is way easier than trying to keep flashing back on the on the controls. All right, Daniel. 
I reached out to a local company that had no jobs posted, but is a perfect fit for me. Awesome. I got a reply from the hiring manager. Awesome. Who said that even though they have no open positions at the moment, she is very impressed with my background and wants to schedule an introductory phone call so that we can get to know one another. Our call is tomorrow morning. I really want to work for this company and need to start a new job ASAP, I would gladly take an entry level position to start out because I know I could advance quickly. How should I approach the call tomorrow to get my foot in the door? I love this. Love. Okay, folks, let's, this, thank you, Daniel, for sharing that because this is This is really important for everybody to know, and I'm really glad that you saved me from a point that I forgot to mention in the teaching portion of this show. So you see, okay, wait, you see what he, you see what he did? I reached out. They had no job posted. Guess what? Every company is hiring all the time. If, if, so in Stephanie's case, what the example I gave you, the case study from the boot camp. She's a salesperson. If she contacts a company with 10 salespeople and no job posted openings, there's still two openings because there's not a company in the world that wouldn't t- trade out its bottom performing resources for a better one. Okay, so even when you don't think there's an opening, there's an opening. When they say, when you think, well, they don't have, but these are the assumptions I'm talking about that you make as a natural human. That, um, when they, when there's no job opening posted, if they they got eight engineers, there's openings. Okay, so they don't need to create new budget. You will take somebody else's dollars and they will trade out somebody. There's all great companies are always hiring. They're always hiring. So in Daniel, in your case, I would, I would, there, I have no different advice. Assume you are speaking with, you know, the hiring official or the recruiter or whoever it is, and you are doing your phone screen, do prep, prep everything you can. If you don't have a, a job description or whatever, you know the kind of functions that you could you could satisfy for them. So you want to be prepared and. And as you're prepping, pretend that you're interviewing for a specific job that you might be in alignment for. It could be one of any three or four or five different jobs, perhaps, based on your background. And then what I would also do is when when you all and Daniel have the good fortune of the company getting back to you and opening up that interview to you, you need to make sure that you are stressing that joining a stellar company is the most important aspect. So you don't need to say, so Daniel was very uh, effusive there and open with his situation. And I know a lot of you have a similar situation. You don't have to say, I need to start working as soon as possible. And I would take an entry level job just to get back in the game. What you can say is I'm evaluating my options. I'm interviewing and whatever you're doing. And the things that I, I, uh, that are most important to me are, I want to join a Super Bowl team. And I'm confident that if I join the right company, that whatever you know oppor- opportunity or entry point that I have to get in the job that I start with, I'll be able to work my way up, you know, to where you know to where I am now, or however you want to phrase it. But you just want to stress that it's most important to join a company. I join a company, I don't join a job. And if I join the right company, I don't have the job I joined for for very long. And I mean that in a good way because you'll work your way up. And great companies know how to elevate the people. Just I would treat it like it's a regular interview. I would do all the stuff we talked about in the boot camp to do that. And then and just from an articulation standpoint, why would you be open to an entry-level position or something else that you just need to package up? I'd be interested because... I'm interested in joining your organization. Um, it's a wonderful company. Here's what I've learned. Here's what I've gleaned from the site and the documentation. You're, 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 you're located in my area, which is important to me. I have a family and so on. That's okay. That is totally plausible. That's totally plausible. So that's how I would handle it. And it is about getting your foot in the door. It is about getting your foot in the door. So I hope, I hope that helps. All right. Laura Filler. They, oh, hey, wait, I gotta read that. Laura, I don't know that I know your name, so I don't know if you're new to the program or if you're just shy, but it, apparently you don't appear to be shy. Uh, thank you. It is so frustrating, intimidating to see limits. Having an education, uh, a BS, can feel like it is worthless when trying to seek jobs outside of education. Y- you know what? Um, I- I'll tell you what, my wife's a teacher, 
And I know a lot of her teacher friends and I know a lot of people in administration, in the education uh, in those institutions, and I even coach some people who are in that work for universities and other, uh, you know, uh, institutions in that arena. And trust me when I tell you, a good employer will recognize that your skills are transferable in many ways. So don't, you know, don't think that you have to just get a job in the educational field. I really would encourage you. Uh, and Laura, if you have not gone through uh, this guy, the the job search masterclass. Um, and for everybody's benefit, the first session uh, of the masterclass is all about, uh, it's all about you, your needs, identifying the right virtual environment, virtual meaning uh, quasi environment, basically all the parameters you need to thrive. And every video in the job search masterclass is 30 minutes or so, about 30 minutes. And I give you the workbook. It's free. Just download it all. It's a wonderful thing, and I get, it will get you right on. It will get you right on track. D. Raleigh from my backyard. How you doing, D? All right. How do you get feedback from hiring persons for reasons they chose not to hire you? I ask. However, I keep being told there uh, there was no feedback, and they are not able to provide it from recruiters and HR. D. That sucks. And you know what? No, I, I mean it. Uh, it. It stinks. And the fact of the matter is that not all companies are going to give you that feedback. So my, I have two suggestions. Ask for it and just say, hey, I'd be, I'd be open to it. Just curious. Um, Want to know, you know if there's anything I can adjust for my future interviews. Don't make a big deal out of it. Okay, don't. Um, a lot of times they won't pass that along. However, however, D, if you have not seen the video on how to get the job after you've been rejected, I created a video, how to get the job after you've been rejected. Use that formula, uh, and I'm not gonna go through it because everybody can go grab the, the video, um, but it, basically when you get rejected for whatever reason, assuming you didn't do something grossly uh, inappropriate in the interviewing process, uh, I give you the exact language uh, of what to say and how to say it that will elicit a good response and that could resuscitate it, whether for that particular position that you did not get hired for or for something else in their organization. That's what I would do. Has more to do with you in a very classy way, putting a little bow on it. It's kind of like, it's a, and I mentioned this in the video, it's a combination of a blended thank you email, like your last thank you email, and a cover letter squished together and I go through the exact words. Um, everybody should check that out. And everybody should have that in their arsenal. Just like I said, Stephanie, case study again, had the packaging already ready for when she did not, get, when she got a no back. By the way, this, I'm not talking about self-fulfilling prophecies here like you're counting on not getting the job. I'm just saying, be ready. I give you the, I give you the exact language. Uh, she knew it was coming. You guys are going through this process. If this is happening to you, you want to have that script that says, thank you. Um, it's basically an appreciation letter. It's also an acknowledgement that they know what's best for their company and you know they're going to be successful. Here's why I wanted to work here. Here's why I know I was awesome and let me know. And it, I go through the exact words and that same formula, three people, new jobs because of that. It was like within the last month. So within like the last month that video came out. So I would I would totally check that out. Ian, my good man, how you doing? By the way, folks, folks, Ian Corzine, if you see him on here at 11.09, he chatted. Any of you that need legal counsel, will, uh, and he, he does a number of different things. I don't know if he does employment agreements or whatever, but Ian, if you could let me know, I know, I know you do a lot with copywriting and fraud and a lot of this other stuff. But I'm guessing he's out on the west coast of the United States, and if you guys should check out his channel, check out his channel, and it's called Ian Corzine, Heart of the Matter, and he's an awesome dude, lots of great videos, does legal work uh, on the west coast, and I, I don't know if he does employment law or whatever, but he could clarify that for you, but you should check out his videos. And buddy, I hope you're still here to hear that. All right. Patricia, how are you? All right. Kristen is chatting with D. All right. Pat is chatting, just chat. Okay, hey, Giassi, I don't know if that's how you say your name. I really would like to know. 
Would love to hear some advice for recent grads going into inter internships, entry level positions. Mm. All right, so uh, I do have a number of uh, uh, videos out there for college students and recent college grads. So one of the things that I would do is I would make sure that you check those out. They're related to resume, interviewing, and so forth. The other thing, and I don't know if you guys know this or not. So I have a, I, I have my YouTube channel, which you all are on. But I have a blog with over 400 videos, podcasts, articles, and a bunch of inspirational stuff and all that great stuff. And it's sectioned by employers, employees, college students, motivational stuff, and so forth. So it, it andrewlasavita.com or you can go into the Mile Walk website, either which way, either which way, go ahead and, and check that out. Um, and what I would do is uh, I would uh, check out the college student section and there's loads of articles and everything from how to win the job to also just your, your, your interactions, like how, how, to, how to be polished as you go to your inter internship or your new job. So loads of stuff out there for that. I it really would love, love for you to check it out. Ian, thank you for that, my man. 95 watch at the time. Oh, it was 100, I don't know, it was 120 or something, but uh, we're, we're down to 105 now. That's okay, man. As long as there's one person watching, then I, I talk to that person. That's, that's all I care about. All right. Um, Pat, you said nine minute mark. Oh, because we got to embrace those control points. Let the, let the stress, yeah, or the rest roll over. I know it is easier said than done. However, if you reshape the way you look at it and you, you just slightly alter the act you're doing. And folks, so, and I know, Pat, this wasn't a question, but, but this, is, this is worth reiterating. I know how hard this is. I know how hard this is. Um, I go through the same stuff in my business. I, everything that I do as a coach and a trainer is exactly analogous to what you're doing in your job searching. I have to send emails out. They're like your emails and cover letters. I have to teach. You have to advertise what you know and how you did stuff in interviews. We, you're interviewing me now. You know, there's lots of, I'm on, I'm on trial all the time, which is why I totally appreciate your attention. I know there are lots of trainers and coaches out there that you could, oh, I don't like the air quotes thing, but you could hire whether you pay them, watch their stuff for free or whatever. That's, you know, so a lot of what we, what we go through in my business, I need you to ultimately buy stuff. It's just like you getting hired. So it's, there's a lot of similar analogies and I know that I have to constantly rearrange the metrics that I'm looking at to know whether I'm making progress. So instead of how many dollars am I making, I look more at how many people's lives am I changing? Right, so I have to just I have to recalibrate my metrics too, to know whether I'm on the right track, and so I don't throw in the towel, and I don't want you to throw in the towel. So it is easier said than done. I struggle with it every day, which is why I know that how hard this is. All right, I know I was preaching a little bit there. Okay, <laughs> you bring some valid points. Uh, high five. I'm trying. Okay, any tips on overcoming mumbling? Thomas, man, I don't, I don't know about that, man. I, I don't know about mumbling, but uh, don't mumble. Are you talking about your mumbling or their mumbling? I'm not sure about that one. And Kristen, thank you. Yeah, you know what? Since since I've been starting to clip these up, I've been stuck. I've been skipping some of the housekeeping stuff, but I appreciate you mentioning that. I know a lot of you guys know what I. Uh, and Alex, yes, go watch. How many questions is too much in an interview? Thomas, there is never too many questions. I don't care what anyone tells you. Here's, here's what I would suggest. Here's what I, here's what I would suggest. So I'm not going to give you a number. I'm going to give you a technique. In the Job Search Masterclass that I pointed to, in the first video, I teach you how to identify your requirements. Your requirements should be the backbone or the foundation of generating the questions that you're gonna to ask to the employer. 
Some people are going to have more questions. Some people are going to have less questions. Any employer that thinks you're asking too many questions is not worthy of you. You need to make sure that you ask whatever questions you need to. I don't care what the number is. And candidly, the more the better because that means you're making a thoughtful decision because you're getting information. And at a minimum, you're making an educated decision because you have the information. Okay, so that, that's the way I look at that. So I, I will not give you a number and, and, I don't all I also don't think you need to ask all your questions in one session. So if you watch the job search masterclass and you watch the first video, it's going to talk about how to put your requirements together and how to put a list of questions together that match up with your requirements. The the goal is to get those questions asked throughout the entire interview process. They don't all have to be in the same session. You could ask the same question to multiple interviewers if you want, if it's a thing where you're looking at uh, you know, are they uh, are they in sync? Are their cones pointed in the right direction? Or you might want to say, I'm going to take these questions for the HR people or recruiter. I'm going to take these questions for my boss. I'm going to take these questions for my teammates. The point is, if you interview for five hours, you want to have five hours worth of data, not not one hour, not ask the same questions. Do you know, and, and to put this in an analogy for the employer, if if you talk to five people, at the employer, and each one of them asks you or says to you, please tell me about yourself, and you just tell your st same story to five different people, they've just wasted about four hours of their interviewing where data, gold data they could have had from you, but they, but they all asked you to tell me about themselves, and so you repeated yourself five times. So that's you know 15 minutes of insight across the board, and that's all they got instead of, let's say, you know, another whole hour of insight. So it's the same thing with you with the questions. You want to make sure you're maximizing your time to get the most insight. So I hope that helps. I know I didn't give you a number, but a lot. I would have a lot. All right, folks, wait, four minutes. Um, hey, wait, I know, I know some of you. Uh, so we went through a whole job search boot camp last month, and there's about, I don't know, four, five, six thousand of you that you have a special on the bootcamp that ends tonight, tonight. Um, so there's a there's a, a small fraction of my my folks in my community who've more recently joined within the last week or two, and you've been given an opportunity. So if you have any questions, you email me. It, make sure to grab this guy. Make sure to grab this guy. Don't forget to do this guy. Okay, these are really really helpful. And uh, I'm going to be back next week, um, I, I think. I, I, I don't see any reason why I wouldn't, on Thursday at, at noon Eastern. And so, you know, check this out. Uh, YouTube will have the recording here in a, in a few moments. You'll be able to access this. And if you like it, hit the thumbs up button, share it. Check out uh, Ian's, uh, you know, check out Ian. He's a great dude. Uh, he's a YouTuber and a lawyer, and he might be able to help a lot. Of you. He's on the West Coast. And uh, for everybody else, let me see if I can sneak one more in here. Oh, Mary Jo, how are you? Lita, how are Oh, wonderful. Bev, you're welcome. Pilar, welcome. Kristen, let me see if I can squeeze one in. Now that no one has home phones, phone screens are done on cell phones. Today was painful. I made sure I had a good connection, but the HR recruiter also on a cell phone kept breaking up advice. Um, here's my here's my suggestion. That is a fantastic, uh, Kristen, fantastic question. I we I still have one, okay? Because I do not want dropping calls and all that stuff. Uh, for for you job seekers, I would never let cell phone reception be an issue because it's it's really frustrating for uh, the job interviewer. Uh, if you're in a loud environment, if you can't hear, if you keep dropping calls, there's not a whole lot you can do with, um, with, with the employer to be able to control. You can't control them, right? So I just, my advice is don't you be the one with the poor connection, if, if at all possible. Uh, and even, you know, it might be worth, uh, for some of you that are job searching, if you are actually uh, doing a lot of interviews and phone screens, either get a get a home phone uh, for a short period of time, 
I don't even pay for that phone. Uh, it's rolled in with my internet and it's kind of bundled and it, it literally was cheaper for me to get, I had moved last year, but it was cheaper for me to get rid of my AT&T and go with Comcast or whatever. But it, it's not too expensive and you don't want it to be the reason or, or borrow somebody's phone or be somewhere else or have a temporary office or whatever you might be able to do. But I strongly suggest that you are not the one whose phone is breaking up. Trust me when I tell you, it is it is very, very painful. And you don't wanna to have to keep repeating yourself and all that good stuff. And if it's, you know, if it was on her end or his end, uh, the, recru uh, the recruiter or the HR person or whoever it was, you know, it's not a whole lot you can do about that. But I would not let that be your issue. I really wouldn't. All right, folks, noon straight up. This thing will be recorded in a second or you, you can zip the rewind button or whatever. If I did not get to your question, if I did not get to your question, uh, go pop it in the comments. I really try to get to these. Uh, I, I do, I do my, my level best to try to answer all of them or say hello to you or give you advice or get you to the videos I've shot that will answer your questions. And uh, until next week, have a great one. I hope everyone has a great weekend. And I'll see you next Thursday. Actually, see you next Tuesday with the video and a Thursday with the video. And then, then I'll be live here Thursday. All right, be cool. See you later.